This week's lecture will cover vital signs, oxygen tubes, chest tubes, and lines. Vital signs are used to determine homeostasis status. There are four vitals, body temperature, respirations, pulse, and blood pressure. They are the primary responses to in the internal or external changes in the body, and an assessment involves a complete set of vitals. The normal body temperature is 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit or 37 degrees Celsius. You can have daily variations of plus or minus 1 to 2 degrees Fahrenheit or 0.5 to 1 degrees Celsius. Body temperature is measured by using a thermometer that is inserted for 20 seconds to 3 minutes. For an oral thermometer, it goes under the tongue. Axillary goes between the arm and the torso. Tympanic is used in the ear. Temporal is used in the temporal region of the skull, and the rectal is to be believed to be the most accurate. Thermal regulation is the body's maintenance of heat production and loss, and homeostasis can be achieved by shivering, sweating, or vasoconstriction. Temperature abnormalities include hyperthermia, which means a temperature higher than 99.5 degrees Fahrenheit. Febrile means with fever. Hypothermia is a temperature below 97.6 degrees Fahrenheit. This could indicate infection or trauma to the hypothalamus. Cellular function is optimal with a specific range of temperatures. For a respiratory rate, the normal range is 12 to 20 breaths per minute for adults, 20 to 30 breaths per minute for 10 years or younger, and 30 to 60 breaths per minute for newborns. The tidal volume is determined by the depth of the breath. The air exchange occurs when we breathe in oxygen and we breathe out carbon dioxide. Ventilation is, occurs when diaphragm contracts and relaxes for inhalation and exhalation. The chest rises during inspiration and it falls during expiration. We typically will count the respirations for one full minute using a stethoscope or observation, and you can also assess the pattern of breathing. Some respiratory abnormalities include tachypnea, which means rates greater than 20 breaths per minute, bradypnea, which is rates less than 12 breaths per minute, dyspnea is difficulty breathing, orthopnea is difficulty breathing unless sitting up or standing erect, and apnea is the absence of breathing. The pulse is also known as the heart rate. The normal range is 60 to 100 beats per minute for adults and 70 to 120 beats per minute for a child less than 10. This is typically measured with a stethoscope over the heart, which is the apical measurement, or palpation over an artery. Three common sites for measuring include the radial artery, which is on the thumb side of the wrist, the brachial artery, which is in the antecutibular fossa of adults and the upper arm of infants, or the carotid artery, which is on either side of the neck. We will measure for a count of 60 seconds, and during that time you're also assessing the strength of the rate and the regularity. Pulse oximetry is a non-invasive device for measuring arterial oxygen saturation in the blood and pulse rate. The normal range is 95 to 100%. Pulse abnormalities include bradycardia, which is a slow heart rate or less than 60 beats per minute. Tachycardia is a rapid heart rate, which is more than 100 beats per minute. And hypoxia, which is a low volume of oxygen in the blood. Blood pressure is a measurement of the force that's exerted by the arteries by pumping blood. The normal range is 120 over 180. The diastolic is the measurement of pressure when the heart is relaxed, and the systolic is a measurement of pressure when the heart is contracting. It's measured by using a stethoscope and a sphygmomanometer. Be sure that the patient does not move during the measurement to have the greatest accuracy. Blood pressure abnormalities include hypertension, which is high blood pressure or greater than 140 over 90. Hypotension is low blood pressure, which is about 95 to 60 or lower. And low blood pressure can actually be normal for some patients. The absence of oxygen to the brain in about six minutes can cause irreversible damage. Oxygen constitutes about 21% of the atmospheric gas. 
Usually 21% is in room air and that's sufficient for most patients. Hypo hypoxemia is low oxygen level in the blood and hypoxia is an inadequate amount of oxygen at the cellular level. Oxygen is the one drug technologists are able to provide without a doctor's order. It is listed on the U.S. Pharacopia. It has good and bad biological effects. It's measured in liters per minute or concentration. Oxygen devices can be pressurized gas or liquid. The device should not be removed under any circumstance for the purpose of taking a radiographic image or ex examination without the consent or supervision of a physician, respiratory care practitioner, or an attending nurse. The nasal cannula is the most common. It provides low concentrations of oxygen, typically 24 to 36% at one to four liters per minute routinely. A mask allows for a higher concentration. Typically it's 35 to 50% concentration and greater than six liters per minute. Tent or oxy hoods provide high concentration of 21 to 100% and ventilators are artificial airways that are used for ventilation. When working with chest tubes and lines, the technologist's responsibility includes obtaining the images without interfering with the tubes and lines, providing the diagnostic image to determine proper placement, and inform staff if the lines are moved, misplaced, or removed. Endotracheal tubes, also known as ET or ETT tubes, um, they are Mechanical ventilation devices, um, they are used for upper airway obstructions and they provide impending gastric reflux or aspiration and tracheal bronchial lavage. Tracheal tubes can also be used to deliver oxygen in higher concentrations than found in air. They are used for airway management in the settings of general anesthesia, critical care, mechanical ventilation, and emergency medicine. Thoracostomy is chest tubes. They are intrapleural. They're used to drain fluid or air from the intrapleural space. A pneumothorax is air in the pleural space. A hemothorax is blood in the pleural space. A hemoneumothorax is air and blood both present in the pleural space. And a pleural effusion is fluid in the lungs. Typically, the technologist will perform images to confirm chest tube position and chest status. Be sure not to catch tubing on imaging equipment. The exterior assembly of the chest tubes must always remain lower than the patient's chest for proper drainage. And caution is necessary when moving and positioning the patient not to move the line. Report any drainage in excess of 100 milliliters per hour and any change from a serous fluid to a darker or red color. Central venous lines are typically inserted into a large vein, usually the subclavian or femoral. They can be used to administer drugs, manage fluid volume, take blood, transfusions, and monitor cardiac pressures. Pick lines are peripherally inserted central catheters, usually inserted in the upper line. A pick line can be used for antibiotics, pain medication, chemotherapy, nutrition, or for the drawing of blood samples. It can be single or multi-lumen. The tip rests in the distal superior, superior vena cava or caveoatrial junction. You can use power injectors on some of these new pick lines to administer contrast, and they often come for chest exams for placement. The Swangans catheter is a pulmonary artery catheterization used to detect heart failure or sepsis, monitor therapy, and evaluate the effects of drugs. There's a direct simultaneous measurement of pressures in the right atrium, right ventricle, pulmonary artery, and the filling pressure of the left atrium. It's typically a double lumen with a balloon tip. Urinary catheters are indwelling catheters. There's two main types, a retention balloon type, V, and the straight type A. They use the French system for sizing. The Foley catheter has various purposes, um, primarily for bladder emptying, to relieve bladder retention, irrigate the bladder, introduce drugs into the bladder, permit accurate measurement of urine output, and relieve incontinence. If the radiographer empties the urine collection bag, then output must be measured and recorded unless otherwise noted.